Hi again then guys and welcome to another Gran Turismo Sports Circuit Tune. Once again, just like with the Mini, this is primarily for N100, but as with pretty much all of my Circuit Tunes, at least those for N-Class cars, you can chop and change, move it around if you want to, up to N200 for instance, that's perfectly fine, you can still use the same essential concept, and in particular you'll just need to change around stuff like the gear ratios, for instance, of course, to accommodate having more power and more torque, but, of course, the car in particular that we're doing a tune for is the Biposto Batoni Bat, if you will. A car which I've always loved ever since I first bought it, I think in GT6. But it was a car which didn't get a huge amount of use from the community because it was three and a half million credits. Whereas now, of course, it's one million which isn't exactly cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than it was. Kind of ironic, given how much stuff like the Daytona Cobra has jumped up, but still, it's a bargain compared to what it was. Now again, a million credits for an N100 car is a bit steep, so of course you'd want it to be pretty good for that kind of price, but it might just be a collector's piece. So let's find out what it can actually do. Now as far as the tuning side of things, I would of course recommend dropping the weight as much as you can, and then as far as power, as I said, it is primarily for N100, but you could tune up higher if you want it to go higher. Then as far as traction control, we've got that turned off. As far as tyres, I've got it on sport softs to give you kind of a general idea of what it will be like. Of course, racing tyres will be even better, but this is for when you can't use those. As far as the suspension, we've got the ride height as low as possible to eliminate the uh, body roll that you can sometimes have in a classic, and also to get the centre of gravity nice and low. As far as the frequency on the suspension, we've got 1.85 front and rear, anti-roll bars themselves on 7 front and rear, then as far as the dampers for compression, 65, rebound on 90, with neutral camber, neutral toe, no downforce, of course, to work with on this one. As far as the diff, I've gone for the lowest on all three, which isn't usually what I do for a front-engine rear-wheel drive car, but of course, try it out. If you don't like it, you could try something else. Personally, I find that to be pretty good for this one because it stiffens it up, and because of the fact that it is old school and rear wheel drive, it does have a tendency to be a little bit tail happy, even with a minimal amount of power. So of course that's fun and it looks good, but it's not good for a great lap time. So as far as the gearbox, finally, we've got an auto setting of 130 miles per hour, then individual gears of 1975, 1475, 1150, 950 and 800, and I've opted for a final drive of 4.4. And that's good enough to get you up around like 120, 125, maybe 130 miles per hour on a longer straight. But it's not quite as quick as something like a Honda S660. So don't expect it to be quite that quick. Of course, that car is a special case. So that's it as far as the tune. It's a pretty easy car to tune, to be honest. It doesn't really do anything that you wouldn't expect it to do. So to see its actual potential, let's take it out to a track that's very familiar to those who followed this channel before, to stuff like N100K cars. And that circuit is, of course, Dragon Trail. So to give you some idea of how quick this car can be, of course, for bang for buck, it's a very expensive slow car, if you're really honest about it, and that's coming from someone who likes the car. So if you're looking purely for value, you should go for something like a K car, because you can have similar performance, sometimes even better, like with the Honda, for a significantly lower price, like one-tenth of the price, in fact, sometimes one one-hundredth of the price, or close enough. So to give you some idea of how quick this one can be, at least on sports softs, it's about 0.2 to 0.3 of a second quicker than the Daihatsu Copen, also tuned to N100's peak. So when you put it that way, it doesn't sound that great for a one million credit car, but of course, it's not that kind of vehicle. It's not a race car, it's not a competition machine, it's a show car, a prototype, a concept. So if you buy it as a collector's piece first and foremost, then again, like with stuff like the 20 million credit cars, you can't really be disappointed if you just like the car and want to own it in general, because then racing it is secondary to that, and it's just an added bonus if you can. So in the case of this car, you definitely can race it, but on the caveat, the strong caveat that the Honda S660 is not present, because with the right driver you could potentially beat one, but the Honda has a big advantage over this one in terms of the kind of lap times that it can do. Against stuff like the Honda Beat, or the Daihatsu Copen, and a couple of others, it is very good though. Especially for a classic, there aren't a huge amount of really good N100 classics, 
So if you do decide to use this tune with this car, of course, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. And of course, you can repurpose it to N200 if you need to as well. But that's it for this build. Of course, stick around today for an overall review of this car and click through here on screen to see all of my other GT Sport tune setups. But that's it for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.